Hey everybody, I am Mega J with a tutorial on how to create a realistic x-ray effect using Maya and we're going to be looking at Maya's sampler info node as well as the MIA light surface node to, uh, to generate this. Now <clears throat> I brought one of my final renders from Maya into Photoshop here to just invert the black and white so we get a better feel for what an actual final or finished x-ray effect might look like and I'm really looking for three elements um, using this effect and the first one is I want to see this surface detail this this texturing and sculpting that I have here on the skull um, I also want to see all the way through the object I want to be able to see the density of the bone structure here and and know that as our as our depth gets thicker it starts to to be more dense and show up because that's well that's what would happen on an x-ray um, I have a, a short turntable animation that I created that I think gives us a, a, a different perspective on this so you can see what I'm what I'm talking about here but if we pause that and we kind of scroll around we can see the inside of the skull we can see the back of the skull we can see um, all the geometry that's happening at the base and, and the surface texture, the surface detail as well. More importantly though is that density when you start layering up the geometry um, it, it, it's going to become uh, it's going to become darker here or if you invert it obviously lighter but that's what's going to happen in a real x-ray effect so those are going to be the key features we're looking at with the sampler info node and to be honest with you it's a pretty it's a pretty easy uh, technique to use so let's let's get over here into Maya and take a look at our, our scene that I have set up and there's not much to it <laughs> um, I've got a, a directional light and a camera and then I have my low-res image here um, of the skull and the tentacles and I, I actually exported these into ZBrush and really increased the um, the uh, the polygon count so I can get a lot more detail sculpted in there and to create the little suckers on the tentacles I, I then created some um, displacement maps out of ZBrush to bring back into Maya to slap on our geometry here I'm not going to go into really much detail on how to create displacement maps but there's a lot of great tutorials out there uh, if you want to learn more about those that's how I learned so uh, go check them out but the displacement maps are kind of our first step here that we want to um, we want to get set up. So what I did is I went over here and just clicked on this to open up our hyper shade because we need to create a couple new materials and uh, I'm just going to create Lambert's one for the tentacles and one for the skull. So let's get these renamed and uh, we'll call this skull two and this one here. Imagination's running wild. How about tentacles too? All right. So now that we have these set up, I'm going to go ahead and get those assigned to the tentacle materials here. And um, now we're all set to uh, to bring in our, our displacement maps, which I've already loaded under the textures tab. I have our skull displacement here and our tentacles there. So let's click on the skull first, and we want to expand it so that we can get to this and open that up because that's going to be where our slot is to middle mouse drag and drop the displacement map into okay so we got that one set up let's go over here we'll expand our tentacles click on that we got our slot there good and again middle mouse drag and drop that in there so now we have let me clear my board here our tentacles and skull materials assigned with the um, with the uh, displacement maps hooked up so I'm gonna go ahead and take a render of that and I'll pause the video using the displacement maps does slow the render time down a little bit and we all spend enough time staring at mantle ray as it is <clears throat> I'm not gonna make you do it any more than you have to so I'll go ahead and pause the video and be back in a moment okay there we go it took about 25 seconds and we can clearly see some of that detail uh, from the displacement map showing up on here and uh, we can clearly see the suckers are coming through 
you can increase the detail of this by adjusting a couple things on the geometry but for what I'm looking for this is going to get the job done and at 25 seconds that's not too hateful so now that we know that's working we're ready to start setting up our sampler info node um, onto these two materials so I'm going to go ahead and open one of these up so we can see it and I'm only picking one because the shading network we're going to build here with the sampler info node we're only going to build it once and then we're going to apply it to both the skull and the tentacle material so that way when we go to make adjustments on it we don't have to do it to two separate you know uh, nodes that we're flipping back and forth to so I'm going to go ahead and grab the sampler info node and bring it down but I'm not going to plug it directly into this Lambert material what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to plug the sampler info node into a, a ramp node and then plug the ramp into the transparency channel of our of our material so let's get that ramp hooked up here I'm gonna pick on the on the transparency channel click the little checkered box and we'll go over here and just select ramp so now got a wild one there so now we have our ramp hooked up to the transparency of the material and as you can see we now have a rainbow color <clears throat> Well, we don't want a rainbow skull, so we're going to go ahead and change that to just a standard black to white gradient. Okay, excellent. Okay, so now with our black to white gradient, we're ready to plug the sampler info node into the ramp. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to middle mouse drag and drop it directly onto the ramp. Go down and select other to open up our connection editor. All of the items here on the left are options that we can pick from the sampler info node to plug into the ramp, which are all the options here on the right side. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to take the facing ratio from the sampler info node and we're going to plug it into the UV coordinate of the ramp. And we see we got our connection there. <clears throat> so we're all set. Excellent. So now that I have this set up on the skull, material let's go ahead and middle mouse drag our tentacles material down and we're going to set it up on that as well so I select that and again I'm going to plug the ramp into the transparency by middle mouse dragging and dropping it and with that since I plug the ramp in it's also going to carry all the sampler info node so any adjustments that we make will now affect both materials okay all right super so now that we have that let's go ahead I want to take a render now that we have the sampler info node hooked up just so we can see how that differs from what we have here so I'm gonna pause the video and be back in a moment okay that is a pretty interesting result that we have here you can start to see some transparency taking place it's it's pretty faint it's pretty hard to see maybe a little better you can see it a little better in, in some of the tentacles but compared to this straight solid image, we're definitely starting to open this up. Um, before we go further, some of you may be thinking, well, why not just reduce the transparency on a Lambert material and, and that'll work. Well, let me show you what happens when you reduce the transparency on just a regular Lambert material. And I'm not going to hook up the displacement maps to this because I think that'll just take too long but just let's just create a new Lambert okay and let's get it assigned to our tentacles and the skull make sure I got that okay and we'll open this up and let's just say we we take that transparency way down <clears throat> excuse me so now we'll go back into here so this is what we have with the sampler info node okay so let me take a quick render um, without the um, you know it's just a reduced Lambert material on there again I don't have the displacement maps on it so it's gonna look a little bit different but you'll get the idea so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video okay this is what we get um, and, and it's somewhat I mean, you can see through the object it's a little bit jumbled up but what you don't have is this kind of highlighting going on and that's what the sampler info node is gonna allow us to do it's gonna allow us to generate more of a, of a surface effect 
than you can get with the regular transparency. So um, play around with it if you want. Get some additional lights in there. I mean, again, right now I'm just using one directional light. Um, you can play around with the transparencies. I just was never able to get as good of a, a successful as, of an effect with doing that than with the uh, with the sampler info node. So, but let's let's talk about the lighting. I'm going to go ahead and reassign our original materials back here because that's what we're working with. Okay, and I can get rid of this. <clears throat> let's talk about the lighting a little bit. When when you look at when you look at our image here, I mean it looks it looks interesting without a doubt, but we're not getting the effect we want. And and quite frankly, you could add ten different lights from ten different directions, and you're going to get some pretty interesting things going on, but you're not going to get an X-ray effect. And I know that because I tried. <laughs> um, and so what I came up with is a, a pretty simple solution. You know when you when your doctor looks at x-rays, they put them up on a light board. So I started thinking, rather than having all these different, you know, physical lights that you can create, what would happen if we created a light board? And that's what I did. So I just went ahead and created a plane and stuck it behind there. And then I, I, I attached a, um, an, a mental ray material that has the MIA light surface material driving it. and we're gonna we're gonna do that right now and, and wow it's it makes a huge difference so back over here to our hyper shade <clears throat> I want to clear out my board down here because that's what we're gonna do effectively this this plane back here is now gonna become our light source to light the whole object up okay so let's go down to uh, to mental ray and we're gonna grab an MIA X material go bring that over here and we also want to grab the light surface material which we'll type in and find there it is <clears throat> MIA light surface okay cool get this back into the program here all right so the reason why we're we're using the MIA light surface rather than just a standard I mean you you can use a regular surface shader and attach it, take the surf shader, and start opening up, there we go, change it to white or whatever color you want, and it's going to work. It'll, it'll do the exact same job as what we're doing, but it, what it will not do is it will not give us any final gather contribution or reflection contribution that we're going to ultimately use. I'm not going to go through that in this tutorial, but before I finish the final imagery, I'm definitely going to fiddle around with these. Final gather using a light surface material, you can create some amazing lighting and really cool effects. Um, and if you haven't played around with it, definitely get out there and do so. So that's why we're using the MIA light surface rather than just a regular surface shader. So what we want to do is we want to select our, our MIA material. We want to go down under the advanced tab, okay? Advanced, open that up. And under additional color, is where we want to plug this in. So I'm going to middle mouse drag and drop and hope it sticks. It did. Good. Sometimes it doesn't and if it doesn't you, know, you can always check your little checkered box and go find it. <clears throat> so now basically the light surface here is driving the color information of the material. So for example if we wanted to change the color from white to like let's say like a red we increase that you can see how it's affecting the MIA material but for what we're doing we just need flat out white light and that's all we're going to use so we've got this set up let's get it assigned and now we want to uh, I'm not going to keep this image let's go ahead and take a render using the MIA light surface material oh wait before we do a couple things number one I need to delete my directional light and number two, and this is really important, whenever you're using any kind of light surface or surface shader, under your, your render settings, go under the common tab and scroll all the way to the bottom to render options. You want to select that, and by default, this enable default light is checked. You definitely want to uncheck that or your, your image lighting will be blown out. So uncheck that before you, uh, before you use any kind of surface light material. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and uh, we'll see how our, our light board uh, compares to using um, standard lighting and the effects we get. Okay, um, a pretty big difference. Um, now we're, we're essentially inverting everything and uh, where we were getting some of the transparency and texturing going on here it's now in our face basically. Uh, really like what's going on and it's starting to capture some of the density we're still missing out on some of the texture and the way some this this is lining up so the next step is to kind of start tweaking this shader until we kind of get the the result that we want and there's really only one aspect that we're gonna we're gonna fool around with and that's the um, that's the ramp right now our ramp is just a black to white gradient and as we make adjustments to this it's going to have a fairly significant effect on that so we know what this looks like so let's see what happens if we move this there and let's let's add a another one here we'll make that white so now we have white to black and then back to white again and let's see what kind of an effect that creates so I'll, I'll go ahead and pause the video and be back in a moment okay well right out of the gate we can see that it made it a lot darker but we are picking up a little bit more detail some of that surface texture that that I'm really looking for is a lot more apparent with this and we're starting to see some density some interesting things happening with the tentacles but it's all obviously not what we are looking at so what I'd like to do a lot of times with these ramps when we are kind of getting something that looks interesting let's reverse it let's say it's black on the outside white in the middle and then black again okay I saved this I'm gonna do a quick render and pause the video and be back okay now we're really starting to see some of that surface texture coming through uh, <laughs> kind of blew everything else out but um, we're really kind of getting as we where we started here you can see a little bit of texture and now we can really see that texture the problem is is these darks are way way too dark but I think I'm on the right path here and if we were to go in and let's say drop these down to let let's say a more subtle gray rather than black I think we're going to get that contrast that we're looking for. I think it's going to really open it up. So let me go ahead and save this and pause the video and take another render. Okay, this is pretty close to um, what we're ultimately trying to get here. If I compare it to my initial render, you know, this is a little bit, a little bit more crisp around the edges and on the detail um, than we have here. But um, you know what? Let me uh, let me get rid of these. I'm going to go back so we can we can look at it a little bit better I don't need these images anymore anyway okay so this is what we have now and this is where I started so we're getting pretty close to that uh, it just needs to be sharpened up a little bit and the way that we're going to do that would be to just keep playing around with the uh, with the ramp here move this around maybe increase the uh, you know the oops I got the wrong one selected there maybe increase you know this make it a little bit darker a little bit lighter play around with it and you can create some pretty cool effects um, so that's pretty much it for now and I'm glad you guys uh, took the time to walk through this with me and we'll catch you on the next time thanks